Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. You know what time it is, so sit back and get ready for the Stafford Voice, your dose of conservative in a world of liberal. Three, two, one. Hey, how is everybody doing out there? I'm your host, Daniel Stafford, and you are listening to The Stafford Voice, where we are, yes, conservative in a world of liberal, and tonight, oh my goodness, have we got a lot of stuff to bring to you tonight. We're going to talk about some LGBT Mormons that got a little... Oh, wow, they took some offense to some quote-unquote new policy in the church. Also, the media mafia put out a hit job on Ben Carson, but will he survive? Dun dun dun! Did black privilege force Mizzou president and chancellor to step down because of their hashtag white privilege? Uh, On this day in history, um, in 1862, there's a little something that goes along with that. Also, we are going to save a little time at the end for something. We we just wanted to highlight something that someone just proved how stuck on stupid they, they are. Um, that and if we can get to it, I want to talk about... Um, whether we're, whether or not we're seeing the return of the muscle car. You know, I love cars, but I think the big three are at it again. I want to talk a little bit about that if we've got time. Um, if not, I'll figure out a way to get it out to you. Um, and coupled with that is the top five list of um, most environmentally friendly vehicles for 2015. Oh, it's so cute. Blah! Whatever. Anyway, you know what? We got to stay on cue because look, there are there's so much stuff going on tonight. Um, oh, that just oh, John, that brings a tear to my eye. I've got a soft spot for the Mustang, and especially the oldies and the classics. Um, anyway, look, I've got I can't get off topic. Um, look, I want you to know there are so many different ways to listen wherever you're at. Set this channel as a favorite. Whatever you have to do so you don't get left behind. The last thing you want to do is is be an old Mopar or an old Chevrolet getting left behind in the dust by the Mustang, by the Ford man. Um, don't get left behind. But if so, for some strange, crazy reason you miss the show, sit tight. You'll be able to catch the replay. There is no need to panic because, nah, well, yeah, we've got you. In the case you aren't already following on social media, you can find me over on the Twitters at Stafford Voice. And tonight, there was just a little bit of a special sneak peek into what we were talking about. We threw it up on Periscope. Um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, it's so nice to see some of you guys joining me from Periscope, um, joining us in the chat room. Special shout out to Irvine Patriot for joining us tonight. Nice to see him back in the chat room. Um, uh, also, you can follow me over on the Facebook. All you got to do is search for The Stafford Voice. You can follow all of our friends over at Politatainment as well, the little website that could, as some people say it. Follow my friends um, Angie and Clay over on the Twitters. That's where they're mostly active. Also, my good Pat, my good buddy Jason of According to Me. Um, that guy is... Like my brother from another mother. I absolutely love that guy. He keeps me in stitches. Sometimes he makes me want to cry. But I've got nothing but love for that guy. So a big special shout out to Jason. Also, we're picking up station affiliates left and right. We've got a new one. Um, If you haven't heard of last week, we announced that. I'm so, so um, honored that they've allowed us to join their station as well. So be sure to give some love to all the um, affiliates and the station wherever you're listening. Stay up to date with anything and everything over at politattainment.net and thestaffordvoice.com. And look, I want you, you guys already know this, but 
I love you guys. You guys are like family to me. You're, you guys are more than just friends. I'm just going to be completely honest. You guys are like family to me. And this show is kind of unlike almost every other show that you will tune into. Why? Because sometimes it's the good, the bad, and the ugly of talk radio. But this, this show is completely listener-supported and funded. Um, and one of the ways you do that is you, you typically shop on Amazon, and for that I am extremely grateful. And that's because you are clicking the little link on either one of those two websites and helping support the show and keep us on the airwaves. Um, and for that, I'm so deeply honored and humbled by the amount of love that you continue to show us. So, sorry, I'm trying to pull double duty here and get this stuff out there because right now I want to talk about um, the LGBT Mormons and how they took offense to this quote-unquote new policy in the church. And it's really not new, but it had to be laid out. They had to lay it out in some form or fashion. And that's because times have changed. The times have changed to the point to where the language we use has to be specific. You know, back in the Old Testament days, we knew it was bad. We were told, we, and you, if you study the scriptures, it will tell you that homosexuality is a sin. We're also said, we're also taught by um, by Christ that we're supposed to love everyone. And I honestly have no qualms or quarrels with anybody in the LGBT community. I think, for the most part, they are a great, um, they're, they're a great tight-knit community. They love and support every each person. But I think that they needed to kind of slow their roll. And, and not really the LGBT community as a whole. I'm, I'm speaking about one tiny little group, the LGBT um, community of Mormons. Because yes, there are um, Mormons who are LGBT. And I, I need to get this out right now. Uh, why is this guy talking, uh, continuing to talk about what happened with the Mormons? And Well, it's because I'm a Mormon. Most of you guys already know that. I'm a Mormon. So when I saw this come across and saw so much of the crap that was thrown out there on the Facebooks or the Twitters, there were so many lies uh, about what was happening. Um, it, so there needed to be some level of clarity in, in, in this wave of anger and confusion. Because for the most part, that's what it was. Most of these people let their emotions get the best of them. And they didn't really stop and think, wait a minute, there's really nothing new here. Just the language had to be specified. It had to be clearly written. And I saw where, um, I saw one article out there that said um, that this was a this came from a Mormon mother of a of a seven of her seventeen year old um, son who happened to be gay, and she said it feels like they're extending an olive branch and hitting you with it. Well, not really. Calm down. Don't be so short so short sighted. Uh, look, the church is just reiterating its doctrine and one of the pieces of doctrine is in the eyes of God marriage is what it is between one man and one woman that's it that's a place that that is the primary place to raise children yes there are uh, LGBT um families out there who do a great job at raising kids but in God's eyes 
He wants to see that happen between a man and a woman. Clearly, all throughout the scriptures, whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, that point is driven home. So, what was all of this about? This was about, you know, don't forget that the church, the, the language was already in place for um, those who practice polygamy um, and, and those who teach inaccurate doctrine. Or, or, and that's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm not preaching doctrine. I'm not preaching policy. I'm not preaching anything. I'm just kind of giving you an idea of what, it, what really happened. Um, so what they did was they, they classed um, homosexuality and same-sex relationships as in the same category known as what we in the church know as being in apostasy. So, what all? What does this mean? Well, I've got some snapshots here, and it's poor lighting here in the studio. I got to get my lighting coordinator on that. Um, it's right here in the handbook, and this handbook is more for those who are at the local levels who need clarity on how to act in certain situations. You know, it when somebody is, um, I'm trying to find here, uh. When, when they are transgressing and it, it gives a it gives an overall guideline as to how to how to go about um, talking about someone who has uh, maybe attempted a murder or um, has gone through sexual abuse or has a, a an abusive spouse. So there's language in in these in these handbooks as to how to how to go forward when something like that happens. And so the language was added in about um same-sex relationships, homosexuality, um and immediately people jumped on the bandwagon because there was language that was put in about children and how to what to really do about these children and, and there's one particular section in the handbook and I'll just read it to you where it says children of a parent living in a same sex in a same gender relationship uh, it goes to define what that is um, and then it says um, talks about what what things that these children are what they can expect to go through um, as a youth and when you when you want to be baptized in the LDS church if you are um, if you're one of those in in the church we've got what we consider converts which are those who join the church on their own. And then you've got those that we consider lifers, who were born into the church um, from parents who were already members, uh, who are already Mormon. And so you've got, you've got these lifers who will... And we teach our kids that um, if you choose to get baptized... We wait until an age of accountability, which we consider to be the age of eight. Well, this language that was added into the handbook simply says, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen until you turn uh, of legal age. And here in the United States, legal age is 18 years old. So if a child in a, living with their parents who happen to be 
uh, same sex is just going to have to wait a little bit. They just have to wait. And if they get upset and want to leave the church and not stick around, then their heart and their mind really wasn't into it. In my in my humble opinion. When you go through adversity, you typically will be drawn closer to God. You're not going to allow things, you know, something like this to say, look, you know, I'm not going to belong because I can't get baptized at 8 years old or 10 years old or 12. Don't make me wait till I'm 18. But there w- there they even added in language that says you can it with special direction through the church you can actually go, have those those blessings of of say baptism or um other things like that so one of the one of the best articles that I, there were two really good articles out there, and I, I'm sorry I don't have the links right off the top of my head, but one of them was from LDS.net, and they really they had uh, a list of myths, and that there were, a lot of people were continuing to push on social media. So to really shut down those myths, they provided answers to these. Uh, one of these is, one of the myths was that it punishes children, and it really doesn't. What it does is it protects children, because children are very influential. When you're living in a home that both of your parents could be um, polygamous, or, or, or both, wow, bad choice of language, both of your parents, all of your parents are polygamous, or you live in a same-sex um, household or you happen to live in a Muslim household. Look, all of those things, you're just going to have to wait. Is the reward much greater? Yeah. One, of the, one of the guys that answered that was actually um, from a gay Mormon. Who has a blog out there? Is uh, I think it's gaymormonguy.blogspot.com, and he actually um, has an, a fascinating article and a, fasc- and a and an outstanding outlook on on this. And I would I would challenge you guys to go out there and find it. If I forget to put the link out there, um, it's called Waiting on the Lord, and he talks about how he first went to BYU. Um, no, and, and he was openly gay, and. He served a mission. He went about... He, you would never guess that this guy was gay unless you asked him. It, 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 there, there's so many myths about stuff like this where one of them was how it, this requires children to reject their parents. And it doesn't. What it does is asks you to... The, the language that was written in here was quote-unquote, disavow. And to disavow something means just to say, I don't agree with it, I'm not a part of it. So, are you disavowing your parents? No, you're disavowing the act. You can still love your parents and not like what they're doing. That's what this was saying. Um, What was another one? Um... These changes are eternal doctrine. No, look, there's a difference between policy and doctrine. Doctrine does not change. Policies can change, but the doctrine of God will never change. And look, there's so much crap out there about this. If you want answers, honest answers, go out there and find someone who is actually in the middle of it. Go find a Mormon and ask them some questions. Don't just get out on social media and follow a couple of hashtags and believe everything you hear. Okay? Now, we are going to take a short break as we get ready for um, the question 
the media mafia put out a hit job on Ben Carson, but will he survive? And uh, during this break, we're gonna we're gonna dive into campaign roundup. Now, if you're a if you're a first time listener, campaign roundup is the good, the bad, and the nasty of what was said during the week from those who are out on the campaign trail. It's not all of them. It's just highlights. We're condensing countless hours of the crap that these that some of these guys are saying so you get a better idea of what's really happening. So when we come back from Campaign Roundup, we're going to talk about the media mafia putting a hit job on Ben Carson. We'll be right back. It's wonderful to be here. I will tell you, this is going to be something special. A lot of people are saying, Donald, you have everything going. The world is waiting. So why be president? Why? And the answer is, I have really nothing better to do. What I am saying is that the general mainstream media all seems to move in the secular progressive direction. And, you know, they would like to create a narrative that certain things are good and certain things are bad according to the way that they see them. If you look at the Tax Foundation, which is a nonpartisan organization that scores everybody's tax plans, they've concluded of every Republican major presidential candidate on that stage that my tax plan would generate the most jobs, 4.9 million jobs, would produce booming economic growth, would increase capital investment by 44 percent. And for every income decile, from the very poorest to the very richest, all of us would see double-digit increases in after-tax income of 14 percent or more. I've gotten used to unfair questions from the media. It's sort of the way it is. If you can't handle a tough question or you can't handle an unfair question, then you really shouldn't be president of the United States. Hey, if you meant your comment about my face being demented in a Halloween mask as humorous, so be it. I guess you misinterpreted Donald Trump's comments about my face and thought those weren't humorous. (laughs) I'm sorry. The bottom line is I obviously don't come from a wealthy family. I had student loans I had to pay off. I only have one debt in the world, which is my mortgage on the home that me and my family live in, in Miami. We live in South Florida. We have a 10-year-old house now. Ultimately, I have one debt in the world. I have two debts in the world, actually. The mortgage on my home and the fact that America, I owe so much to this country because of everything it's made possible for me and my family. All right, we are back. I am your host, Daniel Stafford. And yes, this is the Stafford Voice. Um, so late last week, the media mafia put, a, put out a hit job on Ben Carson. Politico, I know, Politico, you love them or hate them. Typically, if you're left-leaning liberal, you love them. If you're anybody else, you'll hate them. Uh, but they put out an article that alluded to Carson getting a scholarship to West Point. Then they tried to claim this or that but and claim that there was no record. And basically, the whole point of the article for them was to call him a liar and to throw him, a compl- throw him under the bus and back over him a couple of times. So then they secretly changed their tone when they got called out on it. Completely got called out on it. Look, Ben Carson is nothing but an open book, unlike Obama, who has had everything sealed. And Ben Carson, for the most part, is extremely proud, and kudos to him because he's got a lot to be proud of, is very proud of his past. He's not afraid to talk about it. He's not afraid to get out there and say, look, I had a meeting with General Westmoreland. I was led to believe that they were offering assistance to come to West Point. They saw something inside him and saw something in him that said, this guy's the cream of the crop. Cream of the crop, and we want this guy. And Carson said, um, "Thanks, but no thanks. I want to be a doctor. I want to, I want to do something really, really good with my life. I want to go out and change medicine." It. This hit job that the media mafia put out on Carson has done absolutely nothing to hurt him. And as a matter of fact, it it helped him. I I think I saw one stat where he 
um, where he he increased by about three point five. They they raised three point five million dollars over the weekend. That's incredible. Seriously, that is incredible. Here you go. You've got the left that is compl- trying to discredit everything about Ben Carson. And to be quite honest, look, if you're if you're a liberal out there or you're part of the Black Lives Matter movement, be honest with yourself. If you don't vote Ben Carson, you're a racist. I'm just going to call you out right now. You're a damn racist if you don't vote for Ben Carson because he's black. Everybody that voted for President Obama because he was black, if you don't vote for Ben Carson, it's because you're a racist. And speaking of which, look, this story had me seething as it unfolded. This stupid flipping crap that we saw at Mizzou. And it look I, I've got I've got some audio here that I'm gonna play for as as the the president of Mizzou was stepping down. Let's let's go ahead and play that real quick. I am resigning as president of the University of Missouri system today. Change comes from listening, learning, caring in conversation and we have to respect each other enough to stop yelling at each other and start listening and quit intimidating each other through either our role or whatever means that we decide to use. Unfortunately this has not happened and that is why I stand before you today and I take full responsibility for this frustration and I take full responsibility for the inaction that has occurred. Look, dill hole, if you wanted to take full responsibility, what you would have done is you would have suspended every single one of those damn football players. You would have pulled their scholarships and any other funding. You would have said, if you want to play this game, fine, play your game. You're no longer a sports player for this college. We will not tolerate that crap. Then I would have pulled, I would have took that damn coach and I would have tossed him out on the damn streets for supporting them. Pinkle or Pinky the Brain or whatever the hell his name is, he can go suck an egg. These black students calling for leadership change because they didn't do enough? Kiss my ass. You wanted this. You wanted to publicly humiliate the Mizzou's president and the chancellor and force them to get out there and say, look, we failed, we didn't do the job, we didn't do enough because we've got white privilege. Look, you can take your black privilege and stick it straight up your candy ass. So what is their argument? They're saying... In September, some idiots in a truck yelled racial slurs at the student body president. Hey, get this. The student body president of Mizzou just so happens to be an openly gay black man. I don't think Mizzou is overly racist. Let alone a a homophobic university. If you're racist and homophobic, you're not going to elect a gay black guy to be your student body president. And don't forget Michael Sam, you know the openly gay black football player? Uh, Seems to be a lot of racism, Uh uh-huh, yeah. No, look, in October, more slurs were directed to the student body organization by a drunk white guy. A drunk white guy yelled something stupid. Most recently, and this is absolutely disgusting. Most recently, some somebody, we don't know whether it was a guy or a girl, whether they were white or black or whatever. 
They drew a swastika in feces in one of the dormitory bathrooms. Each one of these incidents is and was from the very get-go heavily investigated. There's an ongoing investigation for each one of these incidents. But we want to force the president of the university to claim his quote-unquote hashtag white privilege? Kiss my ass. Your hashtag black privilege is nothing but racist. Oh, but you you have to know that the White House had something to say, right? Yeah, in, in his briefing earlier today, White House Press Secretary Josh not so earnest, praised the group, saying, quote, I think this also illustrates something that the president talked a lot about in the context of, in his campaign, that a few people speaking up and speaking out can have a profound impact on the communities where we live and work. Hey, jackass, that's the problem! When you get 30 football players out singing Kumbaya and holding hands and saying, look, you suck, you didn't do enough, we're black and we're proud, you're out. And what we want you to do is publicly humiliate yourself and say, (laughs) we've got white privilege. It's absolutely sickening. And if you're in the chat room... I have to agree. Kelly, you are spot on. The odds are completely stacked against us. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. You know what? We're going to take a break, and when we come back, let's completely lighten the mood, and let's talk about muscle cars. Let's talk about something... Something fun. All this stupid ignoranus, all these stupid ignoranus people out there talking about black privilege and white privilege and forcing Ben Carson to try and lie about things and putting words in his mouth and pushing a gay agenda on, on churches and this and that. Look, we've got serious problems in the world and the last thing we need is, is to allow the voice of 30 football players to get out there and say, <gasps> No. We're not going to play a game. Okay, fine. Don't play a game. We'll forfeit the game just like you forfeit your contract. Anything related to it, you're out. That's what really should have happened. If the president of Mizzou and the chancellor really wanted to stick to their guns and and take some sort of leadership action... They would have suspended each one of those damn football players and any other student that supported it and said, no, you're the problem. Don't push your agenda onto this entire university because that's not who we are and that's not what we stand for. When we come back, we're going to talk about muscle cars. Oh, yeah. We'll be right back. Red Nation Rising brings you Town Hall Radio. From a single tweet to three million a month, our community is a force to be reckoned with on social media. So don't miss our show Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern on K98 Talk. Our chat room is our co-host and you ask the question. Join us and be heard. So get ready to sound off on Red Nation Rising Radio. No one else is going to do it for you. Whether you're an employee or business owner, when it comes to the correct course of legal action, it's the first step that is important. And make that first step with attorney Ted Hong. You need someone you can trust and has the experience you need when it comes to workplace and employment law. If you've lost your employment due to discrimination, false accusations, or being denied benefits, you need Ted Hong. Or if you're an employer who wants to ensure compliance with workplace regulations and labor contracts, you need Ted Hong. Ted and his team also cover family and property law and estate litigation as well. Ted has over 30 years of experience, and him and his amazing legal team will provide you cost-effective legal consultation and make the experience all about you and your needs. For more information or to set up a consultation, contact the law office of Ted Hong at 808-933-1919 or visit tedhonglaw.com. Ted Hong, 
an experienced and principled attorney you can trust. 808-933-1919 or tedhonglaw.com. I don't know about you, but I'm not the type of guy that jumps into anything without first doing my research. And when I was looking for a holster, I'll admit I was having one heck of a time. You know what I'm talking about here. You find one you like, you try it on, it would be clunky. Another one fits good, but costs way too much. So you try on one last holster, it was slim, lightweight, priced right, but lo and behold, you slide your pistol in, and it falls right out. So what do you do? You've tried all these mass market holsters. Well, go custom. I know what you're thinking. I thought it too. Too pricey. Wrong. My guy over at Rebel Road Tactical will not only put together the perfect fitting, hand-molded, hand-assembled, custom Kydex holster, but you'll get it at an affordable price. Don't wait. Contact Rebel Road Tactical today at 682-217-4579. Again, that's 682-217-4579. The dramatic reinvention of Talk Radio. Here come the spa dolphins. The only thing that can cure racism is Robert E. Lee's penis. Who named this cat? Limber but McCubbin. A Trump Biden debate. Plugs versus rugs. <laughs> <laughs> Real serious nonsense. The show's so bad, you'll laugh at us. The worst podcast. We obviously hold that title. Mondays, 9 p.m. Eastern, K98 Talk. Conservative. In a world of liberal, the Stafford Voice, and we are back. Sorry if the cat's in the background meowing like crazy at you. She does want to kill you. Um, and that was a throwback from last week's show. So if you missed it, shame on you. Go back and listen to the podcast. That was really fun to talk about. Yeah, really, cats really want to kill you. No, they just want to snuggle up next to you and purr like crazy. Speaking of purring like crazy. Have we, are we witnessing, seriously, are we witnessing the return of the muscle car era? The big three are at it again. You you can't deny this, okay? Look, I'm a Ford guy, tried and true, love my Fords, but I got to give it to you. There are a handful, there are a few Dodges out there that I like, not so many Chevys, but when it comes to classic cars, love them. I, I will not pass up the, uh, an opportunity to go to a good car show. And actually, here locally, we've got one that blows um, Good Guys Car Show away. Uh, I think last year they had over 1,600 cars um, and trucks. I love classic cars and trucks. You know, one of these days, I'm going to wind up... I, I will... One of these days, I'll probably be old and crippled, and I'll finally have the dream of owning an old um, mid to late 60s F100 and sit and spend my time sanding like crazy and never finish the project at all. But get this. Uh, Last week, I saw this come across, and I got super excited. You know? Like, uh, who was that that had tingles running up their leg when they would hear Obama talking? Anyway, that was the kind of thing that happened to me. Uh, A 2016 Ford Mustang Cobra Jet. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, they're bringing back the Cobra Jet. Only 50 of these are scheduled to be produced. They're they're basing the engine off of uh, the Mustang GT's 5 liter, the new Coyote motor. Um, But... They're adding a supercharger, one that you can actually get out of the Ford Performance catalog, which is going to bump the engine up to about 575 horse. Comes with a, f- <laughs> this is fun. Comes with a factory roll cage and Hoosier slicks. They swapped out the independent rear suspension. The independent rear suspension was was fun, okay? Because it gives you now if you like to run around on the road course, independent rear suspension is fun because you can tweak your suspension and you can that's what road courses are all about it gives you a much better ride but when you really want a good track car you need a good solid rear axle like the true tried and true nine inch the ford nine inch has been 
tested beyond its limits. I mean, there's not a there's not a racer out there that would um, that would challenge that. If if you're gonna build a hot rod, you need a nine inch, a Ford nine inch. They're bringing it back. They're putting a nine inch um, live axle underneath the 2016 Ford Mustang Cobra Jet. Again, only 50 of them are gonna be produced now. Couple that against, here's one of the other big three. You know, you got the 2016 Dodge Challenger Hellcat. And this is what actually could get anybody excited. It's got a 6.2 liter supercharged V8, 707 horse, 650 foot pounds of torque. <laughs> anybody would love to get behind that, mash, mash the gas to the floor, and, and go until, you know, about five miles down the road when the gas tank runs out of gas. Now, if you really feel like going slow and seeing the tail lights of every single one, of, uh, seeing the tail lights of one of those two cars, whether it's the Hellcat or the new Cobra Jet, go ahead and hop into the 2016 Chevy Camaro ZL1 package where it's got the 6.2 supercharged V8. It's only got like 580 horse. Or you could get the track focused, ooh, the track focused Z28. Um, trying to go with the throwback era right there on that one. It's got a 505 horse, big old seven liter straight out of the Corvette, but um, got plenty of potential with that one. Um, now, couple that with this idea. How about this for fun? The top five most environmentally friendly vehicles for 2015 yes let me read that differently okay the top five most environmentally friendly vehicles for 2015 this this is put out by the american council for an energy efficient economy okay so they they base this they base this list off uh what they call their green score now the green store is an evaluation that incorporates what they consider tailpipe emissions, greenhouse gases, fuel economy, manufacturing impact, and in the case of electric and plug-in cars, the electricity generation score or source. I'm sorry. Uh, so the higher the number, the better. The the more environmentally friendly the vehicle is considered to be. Okay. So. Coming out at the top of the list, number one, with a green score of 61. Go ahead, drum roll, please. The Mercedes-Benz Smart 4, the Mercedes-Benz built Smart 4.2 electric drive. Again, green score of 61. Second place with 59, the Chevrolet Spark EV. Third place with coming in at another score of 59 is the Fiat 500e. And with 57, I can't help but read this one this way. With with a score of 57, it's the Toyota Prius C. It's special. It's ranked number four. It's good. That was a clap, not the clap anyway. Okay. So last but not least, number five, green score with 57 again, the Nissan Leaf. You know, in a good, strong wind here in the Midwest, your Leaf is going to get blown down the road. Okay. I'm looking over at the time and I'm trying to fit all this in. Slow me down if I'm going too fast. But I, there's so much I want to talk about tonight and trying to fit it all in because I want you guys to tune in to the show right after me. Um, I think he's moved to be the cleanup hitter um, each night. And God bless him. He he's a he's a stallion our station director he's super cool so i i'm gonna ask you to stick around and and tune in to his show it's absolutely fantastic um but before we go to a break real quick i i want to tell you about a really good friend of mine over at um rwnj funding these guys are fantastic it is a crowdfunding site yes but uh, look i believe in these guys I really do. I believe in them so much that when it comes time for us to do our um, our pledge drive early in 2016, the only place I'm going to do that is RWNJ Funding. I believe in these guys so much because in reality, they believe in um, each one of us. Uh, they, they don't cave to the PC game. They're... 
they don't. They're just, they're trustworthy guys and gals. They hold true to conservative and libertarian ideals. They they reflect constitutional values. They're not going to cave in and cancel your campaign because somebody got their feelings hurt or just completely thrown off the butt hurt cliff. Look, they believe in you so much that they want to see you succeed. The last thing they want to do is is hurt any of your progress. The the best thing that RWNJ funding can do is to help see you achieve your potential. So head on over to rwnjfunding.com. Again, that is rwnjfunding.com. Uh, start your campaign today. If you if you feel like it, just let them know where you heard them. Where did you hear them? You heard them on the Stafford Voice. Again, RWNJ Funding, absolutely fantastic bunch of people over there. Please head on over there, start your campaign today. Now we're going to go to a break, and when we come back, we've got uh, On This Day in History and Who Said That. We'll be right back. K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. This is JD. And this is Stacy. Join us Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, for Game On. Remember, lock up the children and the old folks. Game On, the home of conservative conservative. Where no one is safe, no one is spared. Not even the hosts. Oh, like that was supposed a to be a spin, spin cycle. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. We love you anyway. Right round, baby. self right round. Ebola anyway. radio strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anybody uh, see the host monkey? Today. Where's the host monkey? Where's the host monkey? For God's sake, I need an antidote. Just anyway, do your random pop spin out of the cycle. Has to do with <laughs> Find us on Twitter at JD and Stacy. You're listening to K98talk.com. According to me and Bunny, this show's not big, it's huge. Uh, Mr. Trump, what are your thoughts on how should we go about? making sure we can protect innocent life in this country. We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that, and a lot of people are saying that bad things are happening out there. We're going to be looking at that and plenty of other things. Donald, Donald, question right over here, over here. What are you going to do as president in regards to Common Core? What actions are you going to take? We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that, and a lot of people are saying that bad things are happening out there. We're going to be looking at that and plenty of other things. That is like the, he can say that for anything. Yeah. Yes! That. It's just insert <laughs> issue. Donald, what are we going to do for lunch? We're going to be looking at a lot of different, <laughs> different things. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that, and a lot of people are saying that bad things are happening out there. We're going to be looking at that and plenty of other things. It's According to Me and Bunny, Wednesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, right here on K98 Talk. Conservative in a world of liberal. The Stafford Voice. All right, we are back, and yes, it is time for On This Day in History. Back in 1862, back in 1862, General Ambrose Burnside assumes command of the Union Army of the Potomac after George B. McClellan was removed. And McClellan was liked by many soldiers and had a pretty loyal following, but there were plenty who detested him. Well, Burnside would have his own set of problems trying to appease those for and against McClellan within the ranks of leadership. Well, Burnside, Burnside wasn't the obvious replacement. Most everybody wanted General Joseph Hooker, who commanded a corps in the army, as did McClellan. He had a strong reputation as a battlefield commander, but he had problems of his own. He had a drinking problem and a thing for prostitutes and didn't have a favorable rating with Henry Halleck, the general-in-chief of the Union armies, that is. It was Halleck who urged President Abraham Lincoln to pick Burnside 
So who was Burnside? Well, he graduated from West Point in 1847, and he served for five years before entering into private business. He tried to develop a new rifle, but his his firm went bankrupt when he refused to pay a bribe to secure a contract to sell his weapon to the United States Army. Well, Civil War broke out and became a colonel in charge of the 1st Rhode Island Volunteers. In 1861, he fought in Battle of Bull Run. 1862, fought in um, Battle of Antietam. After that, he assumed command of the Union Army of the Potomac. And not too long after a battle against Robert E. Lee, officers would begin mutiny against him, and General Hooker would take over in 18, January of 1863. After the war, he served as governor of Rhode Island and as U.S. Senator. He died in 1881 at the age of 57. And some say that his unusual facial hair inspired the word sideburns. But on this day in history, on November 9th in 1862, General Ambrose Burnside assumed command of the Union Army of the Potomac. All right. It is the long-awaited segment that most people try and stick around for because they like to guess... That's right, they like to guess who said that. And by the sound of that tone you just heard, that's right, it's time for Who Said That. This week is starting to become a go-to around here, I guess. Uh, Because every time her mouth opens, something stupid comes out. It really does. This week is no different. Um, And being out on the campaign trail, unfortunately, she just kind of spouts off weird, crazy stuff. And this week was no different. You just have to hear what she had to say. Check this out. We're in a period of one of the worst refugee crises uh, that we've ever faced. It's an international problem, and I think we should have more of an international response. But then we have to ask ourselves, why is this happening? And why is it happening? Because of terrible governance, because of corruption, because of conflict, because of climate change. Climate change. Climate change. That's right. That was none other than Hillary Clinton talking about the refugee crisis in Syria, and she ends it by saying that maybe it's because of climate change. Look, I I don't have to really go too far into detail on that one to explain that she is completely stuck on stupid. Uh, It's... Yeah, she's just completely stuck on stupid. There's no... There's nothing... There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Well, you know what? I'm checking the time, and for some weird reason, we were able to fit everything into the show tonight. Um, Unfortunately, that is all we have time for this week. And God willing, the Stafford Voice will be back next week. You can follow me on Twitter at Stafford Voice. Look me up on Facebook by looking for the Stafford Voice. Email your questions, comments, concerns, love mail, hate mail, whatever it is. I will do my best to answer that in a timely fashion. Send them to the Stafford Voice at gmail.com. Again, that is the Stafford Voice at gmail.com. Thank you so much for your time tonight, and until next week, thanks and God bless.